Be Rad podcast is brought to you by MoFo, male optimization formula with organs to boost testosterone. Brad's macadamia masterpiece, mind-blowing nut butter blend, now offered on Amazon. Chili technology, temperature-controlled mattress systems for a good night's sleep. InsideTracker.com, offering blood, DNA, and fitness tracking data all in one place. And Organifi, whole food organic superfood supplements and drink blends. And please visit the shopping page at bradkearns.com for my personal selection of favorite products for health, fitness, and peak performance with great discounts for listeners. Here we go with the show. Interestingly, the last time I was on a smoothie kick was, oh, maybe about four years ago, and I was inspired to concoct this super nutrition green smoothie filled with a bunch of raw produce. And when I'm shopping, if I'm tired and just done a a sprint workout, I'm going to grab those blue blue corn chips uh, reliably. Uh, But then maybe the next five times to the store, uh, when everything's dialed in, I'm not overstressed, I'm not tired, I haven't depleted myself, I might pass on those because I don't want to make those a centerpiece of my diet. Look, eat a real breakfast. Make it six eggs and a full avocado. So you're going to be super nourished for your athletic day. Remember, he's talking about athletic clientele that burn a lot of calories and require a lot of nutrition. Hey, listeners, we got questions, questions, and more questions. Excellent questions, all of them. They made this stringent cutoff to be part of this fun, exciting, Be Rad podcast show. Thank you for making this a community effort. I really appreciate you guys. Please send us some feedback. Podcast at bradventures.com. Pretty easy to remember and throw down. Let us know what's on your mind, even if it's not a question for a show. Uh, Feedback, suggestions, all kinds of fun. But today, let's see if we can Be of help, be of interest, get some entertainment value, some motivation, inspiration from real people around the world. That's my favorite part. All you get to do is sit down at your computer and type, and you can send it from (gasps) Melbourne, Australia, one of my favorite locations, La Réunion in the Indian Ocean, uh, Scandinavia, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Super awesome to hear from all of you. And Jim Johnson is first up, and he says... Hey, I read on Amazon that certain people taking ancestral supplements, male optimization formula with organs said that they took the product and they tested their blood and their testosterone declined. Uh, maybe should I cycle this product on and off? What do you think? Oh my goodness. Guess what? This is an example of Amazon hacking from uh, devious business practices. And so people have popular products like MoFo and obviously coming from probably a competitor, they will throw up a review with minimal stars, critical comments, and somehow it will rise to the top of the most read reviews, probably from a collective effort to have 50 of their friends click on the helpful button. Uh, we've had this happen before with our uh, books that we published and then see some, um, some, you know, lame-o one and two star reviews from people that, uh, didn't seem terribly authentic. Now, I'm not saying this, this possibly uh, could be uh, a true occurrence where, hey, you buy a bottle of pills, uh, you test your blood, you get a level, you test six weeks later or 12 weeks later or whatever, and your testosterone is lower. And you can read on my blog uh, some personal anecdotes about my uh, testosterone blood tests over the years. I'm actually working on a book where I'll have vastly more detail uh, that should be interesting insights, especially some of the misconceptions about some of the common blood values that we use to track male hormone status. Uh, one example being free testosterone is co- commonly referred to as being more important than serum testosterone. And there's some experts and some great research suggesting that free testosterone is probably not as valuable overall as tracking your total blood levels of testosterone because there's a lot of factors that um, can influence that test result. It's testing a super microcosmic amount in the trillion categories. So even if your level changes from one day to the other, it's probably better to track your total testosterone. Uh, That's just an aside. Uh, But back to the review and the idea that uh, could this, 
you know, product cause your testosterone to drop. Um, it's almost inconceivable since it's not a drug or having any kind of effect on that. But what can cause your testosterone level to vary quite significantly is your lifestyle. And my blog article is talking about, I, I think the title is something about how I doubled my testosterone in a matter of months. And the way I did that was to uh, pull out of an overtraining spiral uh, with uh, some extensive rest and some time off and then kind of training in a more sensible manner, uh, backing off my heart rate most particularly because I was uh, putting in a lot of uh, aerobic exercise time playing speed golf at an elevated heart rate beyond my maximum aerobic heart rate. And that will absolutely tank your testosterone. So what's amazing to me is in short time periods, how you can turn things around from uh, so so or even uh, of concern and bring things back into the healthy or even the superior category. So tuning up your diet, uh, going on a 30-day food restriction experiment where you're cutting out um, grain sugars, refined vegetable oils, maybe even testing your plant uh, sensitivity by excluding plants and going on a really nutrient-rich animal-based eating experiment and doing some more blood testing and seeing what happens. And interestingly, a uh, long-time podcast listener and former uh, interview guest Dave Cobrain, super healthy guy, uh, did some blood tests and found some uh, you know decline in his values after doing a carnivore diet experiment and lowering his carbohydrates maybe more than he needed to for his ambitious training regimen. Uh, but he also reported feeling great uh, during the experience. So that's another vote for not living and dying by your blood values, but more so weighting the importance of how your subjective uh, performance and workouts and uh, sleep and stress levels and things like that. And so I always like to look for uh, performance trackers, you know, markers such as your maximum aerobic function test, or maybe if you're in the gym and you're uh, knowing how well you do with uh, deadlifting, uh, how many sets you can do, how many, uh, what's your maximum weight things like that. Um, TJ, our main man here at the B-Rad podcast, uh, likes to do true powerlifting and try to beat his one rep max in deadlift and do triple his body weight, which he succeeded. You can see it on my Instagram way back when. This guy pulling 610 pounds off the ground. Absolutely fantastic performance. Um, Dave did an astonishing birthday feat on his 60th birthday, which consisted of a new PR in the deadlift, 375 pounds, uh, with a a lot of warm-up weights getting up to that, and then busted out the incredible CrossFit Murph workout, which consists of running one mile, uh, doing 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and 300 squats, and then running another mile. And he did that all in a non-stop 42 minutes on the heels of pulling all that weight off the ground and turning 60 years old. Uh, it was great to accompany him on that wonderful celebration day. Uh, three of his brothers also weighed in and did uh, Murph participation. And so it was an all-around fitness celebration. Uh, but the, the takeaway point there is that whatever his blood values said that were down or up, um, you know, putting in some amazing athletic feats and saying, well, at least I can still uh, run to the top of the mountain without stopping. Um, it's probably going to correlate with good blood work, uh, but sometimes there's some uh, particulars there that are going to cause you to fluctuate. And I have had pretty significant fluctuation in my testosterone values of testing it frequently over the years, uh, going from kind of the uh, medium range uh, to the superior range, back to the uh, pretty good or good back to superior, maybe back down to medium, and so on and so forth. So it wasn't anything I need to go see a physician about, uh, but it was some good information to uh, consider when planning my exercise regimen. And I believe that's the biggest variable for me is a tendency to um, get behind, overdo it a little bit, be in sort of a tired phase, and then pulling some blood and noticing that uh, your testosterone's a little low. Uh, but back to answering the question, should I cycle on and off mofo so I don't get a decline. Uh, interestingly, this product 
could be considered a food supplement rather than a performance supplement or a true uh, vitamin or nutritional supplement that's uh, obtained through chemical extraction process in a laboratory and it's not something in nature. So basically what you're swallowing in these pills are freeze-dried animal organs from 100% grass-fed cattle from New Zealand. So a very pure source, nothing else in the capsule, no fillers, additives, binders, or added agents to reduce the purity or alter what you're consuming. And so therefore, it's basically having a little meal of testicles, prostate, heart, liver, and bone marrow on your plate. And so you don't need to worry about consuming it on a full stomach. You can have it on an empty stomach because it technically is food. And so it's just getting a wonderful nutritional boost to your diet, as well as the molecular signaling that you need to uh, naturally uh, optimize your internal testosterone production. So I don't cycle on and off any of this stuff. I take a ton of pills every day from ancestral supplements, not just the MoFo, but many other ones, uh, especially prostate. Uh, beef organs is another good one. They have some new ones that are really interesting. One's called fish eggs and one's called blood vitality. So I'm all over it. And basically it's just a way to ensure that regardless of the ups and downs of my dietary practices, I'm getting this uh, superfood score really Really high every single day. And the other way I'm doing this is uh, doing this cool new smoothie that's got a bunch of superfoods in it. And that will kind of give me that boost also. It's really filling and satisfying. So, and it's a convenient way to ensure that I'm getting a top score in that category. So I'm throwing in like six pastured egg yolks. I'm throwing in a huge chunk of frozen liver. I'm putting creatine, glutamine, uh, maybe 20 different capsules from ancestral supplements. So I don't have to swallow them. I just drink the smoothie. Uh, I'm getting a lot of whey protein, collagen protein. And so it's just sort of a convenience factor. It also tastes good and you can look on a recent Instagram post where I talk about every single ingredient in there. And I'm really liking this as a new recent inclusion into my dietary strategy. And it's kind of the centerpiece of my uh, caloric consumption uh, during the day. And I feel really satisfied. It might be something that happens in the late morning and I might not eat much until dinner time on many days. Other times I might eat more. And boy, I highly recommend it, especially to cover those bases. Interestingly, the last time I was on a smoothie kick was, oh, maybe about four years ago, and I was inspired to concoct this super nutrition green smoothie filled with a bunch of raw produce, an amazing burst of antioxidants and phytonutrients and all that great nutrition going down into one blender and getting way more than you might even if you had a big salad. So I was stuffing in uh, these big leaves of kale and spinach and celery and beets and uh, some protein powder. And boy, it was green. It tasted pretty good. Uh, but guess what? Every single time I drank it, which was several days a week during this mini phase of uh, going for the green smoothie, uh, my stomach would pop out. So I'd experience this pretty significant bloating and it would last for several hours. Sometimes it was accompanied with transient sharp abdominal pain. So I'd just turn the corner or walk up a staircase and I'd get a little jolt in there just for five or 10 seconds, like, ow, okay. And then it would clear and it'd be okay. Uh, so I contend that I was getting such a mega dose of the oxalates and the other anti-nutrients that are uh, strongly concentrated in leafy greens and all the other aging that were in that concentrated form in the smoothie, high quantity, and also in the most difficult to digest form that is raw. Yes, the nutritional value is higher uh, before you cook something, but it's also much more difficult to digest when it comes to uh, the natural toxins that are contained in all plants. And that's why we have to soak, sprout, ferment, and cook most plant foods in order to even render them edible, uh, such as nuts and things like that, which are poisonous until you uh, treat them very carefully. Same with a lot of foods that need to be soaked, sprouted, or fermented. So interestingly, um, I, I kind of had a, a second guessing going on there that if I'm consuming something that ostensibly is supposed to be super duper healthy for me, why does my stomach hurt so much? And I finally woke up to the idea that it didn't really make sense that something that was causing that bloating and pain uh, was, was healthy. And even if I did get some health benefits from consuming 
consuming all the all the uh, the, the good stuff in there. It was coming with uh, Dr. Paul Saladino calls it the package insert, which was the uh, digestive reaction to the plant toxins. So now we're on to the uh, liver and egg smoothie. Whoop de doo. All right. Uh, next question from CJ. Hey, Brad, I love your macadamia masterpiece nut butter blend, and I would really like you to uh, sell it in a squeeze package. I would love to take it out there on bike rides and athletic events. And also, how can we keep running out of it? How soon are you going to restock it? Hey, yeah, <laughs> um, we've run out a few times because the demand is awesome. So we really appreciate your patience. And boy, next time this stuff's available... Uh, you can order it on Amazon. You can order it directly from bradkearns.com. Stock up, people. We have a special deal. Buy three, get one free, or buy six and get two jars free. I know eight jars is a lot, but guess what? The shelf life is years with this stuff, and it's delicious, and then you'll be sure that you'll never, ever run out again. And yes, indeed, one day soon, we aspire to uh, sell it in package form so you can once and for all depart from that nasty... Uh, reliance on sugary energy gels when you're trying to exercise. And I know you have to get through uh, a long workout. And if you have a gel in your pouch and you need it because you're bonking, that's great. But I believe through uh, proper training methods, not exhausting chronic exercise patterns, but a good balance of stress and rest, regulating your heart rate properly so that most of your uh, long distance endurance stuff is at maximum aerobic heart rate or below. And then also fueling with some uh, energy rich uh, ideas such as the packets of nut butter and other companies have those out there now. They're really successful. I've used some good ones from, uh, let's see, I think RX and Justin's and yeah, you can find stuff that actually has nutrition that's not going to tear your stomach apart or put you on that energy roller coaster like the sugary stuff does that I myself consume for many years. I was slamming those drinks and gels and uh, jello type agents uh, to get through workouts. But when you become a fat adapted athlete, Athlete, it's much nicer. And then you can also kind of think twice uh, about needing to consume a lot of this stuff to complete your workout regimen. It, it may be an opportunity to second guess your workout regimen itself and the workouts that you're performing. So, hey, once in a while, if you're going on the um, uh, the, the rim to rim to rim Grand Canyon crossing, like longtime listener John Staley just did in May. And I talked about his effort, uh, in detail on a recent podcast. He's going to pack up with whatever he needs to get out of the Grand Canyon before dark. Unlike the people that he looked down and saw who were unprepared and had their, uh, headlamps climbing up the canyon wall with many more hours to go, even though it was snowing and sleeting at night. Anyway, um, whatever it takes to get through those magnificent endurance feats once in a while. That's great. But when you're out there reordering uh, more gels and more uh, sugary powder to mix into your bottle at workout after workout, um, that could be an opportunity to second guess what the heck you're doing uh, because it's truly uh, overly stressful in most cases and also not aligned with health. In many cases, not aligned with uh, reducing excess body fat or maintaining an ideal body composition because you're consuming so much sugar, burning so much sugar in overly stressful workouts, and then creating the appetite for more and more sugar. So there's a little plug for um, nut butters in packet form in general. He's also looking for a good resource for quick preparation recipes. Uh, his son's in construction. They don't have a lot of time to prepare a healthy meal. Uh, they got to get out the door, 5.30 a.m., slam some coffee. And is there a way to, um, you know, prepare a, a quick energy lunch? Uh, he told Sisson to um, uh, get Kraft Heinz making some uh, instant or single serving things. And I, I believe that they do have a frozen line of meals now where you just empty the packet, uh, warm it up, and you're good to go. I remember doing some filming. They looked pretty good. There was a Thai one, like a, a, a peanut Thai sauce one. There's chicken and vegetables. So yeah, go check out Primal Kitchen's new line of frozen meals. Another commercial during the middle of the show. And um, for quick prep, rec quick prep recipes, uh, the keto cooking for cool dudes uh, 
book had some nice quick ones for cool dudes in there. And also we're developing a new cookbook now on the heels of two meals a day. It's called the two meals a day cookbook. (gasps) And there's a whole section of a dozen plus recipes. And I believe the actual title of the section is, uh, super easy, quick recipes for people who are too busy to cook. And so maybe you'll enjoy that coming out in 2022. Joey, thanks for writing in. Hey, Brad, my wife has a really hard time eating low carb or paleo. She usually makes it two weeks into eating this way, feeling okay. And then she starts having issues. She gets lightheaded, low energy, feels really bad in the afternoon hours. She can eat carbs and feel just fine. But when she's trying to go clean slash low carb, she never adjusts fully. Have you seen this before? Uh, all the time, buddy. And the indication is that something's wrong with the approach and it might not be um, optimal to try to continue to uh, work against the natural sensations that you're experiencing. Now, uh, we want to talk about some more details here because if you're eating, um, you know, a, a lot of processed foods in your everyday diet, so you have a standard grain-based, standard American high-carbohydrate diet, and then boom, you're going to go for a low-carb experience out of nowhere coming off of this carbohydrate dependency lifestyle, you're going to have a really hard time and you're going to get symptoms such as you relate. Uh, But if there's more uh, nuance here, such as your wife is a, you know, hard exercising, devoted exerciser, has healthy body fat levels already. Maybe she requires more carbs to sustain this type of lifestyle. And she's not going to be one of those great candidates to diligently restrict carbs in the name of health. I don't like uh, hearing about any of those symptoms and that should never happen even in a transition away from carbohydrate dependency to becoming fat adapted. So some of the checkpoints that your wife wants to hit here are to make sure that she's eating enough nutrient dense foods. Uh, Dr. Tommy Wood had a great line about this on one of our podcasts where he says, you know, I'm looking at these food journals from the athletes I coach and they're writing in breakfast, two eggs and a half an avocado. And he says, look, eat a real breakfast, make it six eggs and a full avocado. So you're going to be super nourished for your athletic day. Remember, he's talking about athletic clientele that burn a lot of calories and require a lot of nutrition. So that's number one is to make sure you're eating enough of the great stuff uh, to, to possibly mitigate some of these symptoms. And then regarding the carbohydrate intake, if you're emphasizing the nutrient dense carbohydrates rather than the nutrient deficient carbohydrates, and an extra sweet potato here or there is going to help you uh, minimize these these adverse symptoms like getting lightheaded, no energy, feeling really bad in the afternoon hours. Um, that could be a great move to integrate those and keep those into the mix. Um, but th- there's also uh, all kinds of other factors and ways that this could be screwed up. And one of them is not consuming enough sodium. One of them is exercising in too strenuous of a manner, especially as you're trying to make a dietary transition. So uh, keep all those in mind. And if you dial in your sleep habits, your exercise habits, especially balancing stress and rest in the exercise program expertly, uh, eating a lot of nutrient dense foods, then you can optimize carb intake according to appetite is another uh, great way to go. So uh, I know personally, when I'm kind of craving carbs or see carbs sitting around and say, boy, that looks really good. And one of my favorite examples is uh, blue corn chips, right? So I'm going through the store and when I'm shopping, if I'm tired and just done a, a sprint workout, I'm going to grab those blue, blue corn chips uh, reliably. Uh, but then maybe the next five times to the store uh, when everything's dialed in, I'm not overstressed, I'm not tired, I haven't depleted myself, I might pass on those because I don't want to make those a centerpiece of my diet. It's not like I have to restock and I have a special place on my shelf to always have things like that. But when those foods are leaking into the picture, uh, I th- oftentimes think, that it's a sign that, hey, you know, I'm going to benefit from some extra carb intake here. Same with my evening popcorn uh, enjoyment, which I did an entire show on. You can search the uh, the podcast app or the website for the Fatty Popcorn Boy Saga. And, you know, um, once in a while, if I feel like making popcorn, that's probably a great suggestion that, um, 
you know, a little extra carbs would might help me uh, replenish glycogen and go on my merry way with no trouble. Uh, but there's a big difference between that and just locking into the habitual consumption of these hyper palatable foods that cause so much trouble in the modern diet. And I think it's a slippery slope that we have to navigate here because if you surround yourself with these foods and you give yourself the opportunity by keeping them in your home routinely or your environment, your peer influence, your family influence, if everyone around you is chowing down on a snicker bar uh, while they watch TV in the evening, uh, that's going to uh, kind of be the slippery slope where these things just get integrated into uh, lifestyle in habit form rather than because you're truly craving them. So we want to be mindful with our food choices and try to keep things as clean as possible. And yeah, when you are uh, interested in um, an indulgence, make it a really excellent, sensible choice where you're enjoying the heck out of it. And instead of uh, frozen, crappy, chemical laden cheesecake, you're going to go and get a slice of the freshest, most incredibly uh, homemade cheesecake that you can find from the specialty baker or whatever the example is. You get the difference here where I want you to, you know, enjoy your life to the fullest, not be trudging around, uh, denying yourself every way, shape or form. But that's a big difference from using uh, rationalizations and saying things like, hey, everything in moderation, what the heck, uh, you know, five times out of seven days in the week. That's not what we want to hear. <laughs> okay. Yosef. I love your content, he says, especially your apparent readiness to change with the body's needs and not just buy into what's considered healthy because that's what everyone says. I'm an Orthodox Jew, and I was wondering if you ever considered making Brad's macadamia masterpiece kosher. Hey, I would love to do that. I'll get the little kosher symbol on there. Hopefully, they're not going to soak us for uh, a massive buy-in because I remember uh, looking into uh, putting some designations on my jar when we were first producing our first batch. Uh, I, I thought I'd put a, a keto-approved label on there for the keto enthusiasts. Uh, I think I looked into paleo as well. And they wanted uh, many thousand dollars for me to say that the product was keto approved. So I said, you know what? That's where I got the inspiration for the distinctive logo on the side of every jar of Brad's Macadamia Masterpiece, where it proudly says Brad Certified. Yes, the highest order and the most prestigious honor, far above any of the other uh, stamps of approval that you can find and pay a lot of money for as the manufacturer. So yeah, uh, we'll see about kosher. I don't know what the uh, requirement is, uh, but it's worth looking into. Thanks for mentioning that. Also, says Yosef, what would you say about a cheat day once a week? The reason I ask is because uh, once a week on Saturdays, I keep Shabbos. This is a day of rest and enjoyment, and I'm most permissive about what I eat. Throughout the week, uh, I limit my sugar intake to almost nothing, added sugar, and I try to stick to healthy meals. So do you have any tips about this? So I don't like the connotation cheat. I would rather say that you have a celebration day or an enjoyment day. And there's a, quite a difference there because a cheat day is sort of a negative connotation and it implies that you are uh, not fully enjoying your regular uh, ad, your regular program such that you have the compulsion or the inclination to cheat and get away from this torture uh, that you're 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 eating on the other days. And I know that's not the case, uh, but you know when you're really careful and you're disciplined and you can look forward to uh, a day of celebration and that religious overtone is wonderful because you're honoring your religion by celebrating and resting and not worrying about your strict diet. Oh my gosh, yeah, that sounds like a winning formula. Uh, now, again, I mentioned about the slippery slope in the previous question, and if you're kind of uh, locked into this mode where you take one day a week to stuff your face with a bunch of crap, that is sort of a different approach to someone who uh, wants to make it a celebration day, go looking for the most uh, nutritious and highest quality treats that you can find or whatever it is that you're interested in eating. And I'm also going to do 
um, one more add on here where I think uh, it's a personality issue as well. So for some people, uh, maybe it won't work and maybe, um, the cheat day will turn into, um, you know, every other day is a cheat day. Uh, some people like to keep uh, a, a tight rein on this thing and never have a bite of ice cream because they know that they're going to succumb and other people uh, give themselves permission for one spoonful every evening. And that's what works for them personally. I had a so I think what we want to look for here is a comfortable, uh, smooth pattern of reintegrating into your f- baseline foundation of a really healthy diet without a lot of added sugar, and then also enjoying that day of Shabos where um, you're not having a guilty conscience or uh, kind of you know a buildup where you can't wait till Saturday and all you're thinking about is the junk that you're gonna throw into your mouth when uh, the clock strikes Saturday. So we want to you know make it make it smooth and breezy on both sides of the of the issue okay so hopefully that's a good answer and there's a good little tidy show thanks that was some fun stuff huh people i hope you guys enjoyed listening to that also podcast at bradventures.com send us some email and please spread the word about the show we appreciate it so much have a great day Thank you for listening to the show. I love sharing the experience with you and greatly appreciate your support. Please email podcast at bradventures.com with feedback, suggestions, and questions for the Q&A shows. Subscribe to our email list at bradkearns.com for a weekly blast about the published episodes and a wonderful bi-monthly newsletter edition with informative articles and practical tips for all aspects of healthy living. You can also download several awesome free ebooks when you subscribe to the email list. And if you could go to the trouble to leave a five or five star review with Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to the shows, that would be super incredibly awesome. It helps raise the profile of the BRAD podcast and attract new listeners. And did you know that you can share a show with a friend or loved one by just hitting a few buttons in your player and firing off a text message? My awesome podcast player called Overcast allows you to actually record a soundbite excerpt from the episode you're listening to and fire it off with a quick text message. Thank you so much for spreading the word. And remember, be rad.